Hello guys, welcome to AWS Hands-On. So in this video, I'm going to talk about S3 encryption. So basically there are two types of S3 encryption, uh, encryption at rest and encryption in transit. Uh, encryption in, at rest is uh, subdivided into three more subgroups you can call. Uh, they are server-side encryption using S3 managed keys, uh, server-side encryption using KMS managed keys and server-side encryption using customer managed keys. And encryption in transit is done over using SSL. So I'll show you that how we can do uh, encryption in transit as well. So firstly, I'll show you how we can implement encryption at rest using server-side encryption S3 managed keys. So I'm in my AWS S3 console. So I've created a bucket, you can see. So I'll go into the bucket and I'll upload an object. Uh, I mean, encrypting an object is a very straightforward process in S3. I'll show you how. So I'll take this image, I'll upload it. I'll go to next, I'll go to next. And here you see you have encryption option. So right now I'm using S3 managed keys. So I'll use S3 managed keys. Go to upload. Now if I check the properties, so you can see the encryption says AES-256. So it's encrypted using server-side encryption using S3 managed keys. What happens if I click on this object? So I'll get a permission denied since all the objects by default are not public. So let me make this object public. Go back to it again. And you can see I can observe. So what S3 did, did is it automatically decrypts the object when a GET request is made. So let's get back to our AWS console. Now let's encrypt an object using KMS managed keys. So for that I need to have a KMS key. So I'll go to my uh, AWS console and I'll go into IAM. So can see in the left hand corner is, it says encryption keys so let's go get started now so by default there's one key already so I'll create another key I'll say my s3 encryption my encryption key in the advanced option it should be KMS and not external go to next step I don't want to tag this uh, for user and uh, no I don't want any user to have administrative permissions or if you want if you have a list of users you can select so let's just go to next same for choose the IM user and roles that can use this key to decrypt the data so since I've selected that user I'll select this one also and here's the policy which will which it will implement finish so I've created a key now let's get back to the S3 console go to my bucket upload another object okay next select next go to KMS managed keys and you can see my S3 encryption key it's already there next and upload so now you can if I check this object it says AWS KMS managed key okay so now the third is uh, using our customer managed keys so the benefit of uh, using customer managed keys is you have complete control over the keys so you can rotate it uh, at your will you can change the keys so that's in completely uh, in your hand 
So that's the benefit of using customer managed keys. So I'm going to pause this video for a second uh, while I generate a customer managed key and then I'll use that key to encrypt an object. So guys, now let's uh, upload an object using a customer managed key. So if you see a string, uh, let's go into a bucket, go into an object, properties, encryption. So you'll not see an option to upload uh, a, uh, an object using customer managed keys encryption from the console. So for that, uh, I need to use uh, AWS CLI. So I'll, I'm logged into my uh, console. Now I'll go to my CLI. So to command to upload an object with customer managed key is uh, AWS S3 CP your image. So I'm going to upload image 21 to JPEG to S3 colon forward slash forward slash my bucket name, which is, let me just check my bucket name, S3 encryption hyphen test, S3 encryption hyphen test, hyphen hyphen server side encryption hyphen customer managed key then I have already created a key uh, so I'll just paste it here so this is my key which I, you can use Google or any key generator to generate a 32 uh, digit uh, key and then I'll uh, tell AWS to encrypt this using AES 256 encryption let's see if i've not done anything wrong it should upload and yes i need to provide the profile of the account where i want to upload this so if i've not done anything wrong it should upload it okay it's saying event not found uh, let me see what have i done wrong where is it not getting this event from here so what I can do is I can copy this command probably I should put this in not found Okay, I'm going to pause this video for a second and see what am I doing wrong and then I'll come back. Hey guys, uh, sorry for the interruption. So welcome back. I think there was some issue with the key itself. So what I did is I generated another random key. And if you see, it's nothing. It's just uh, numbers from 8 to 1. And yeah, I've just repeated that four times. So it's about 32 digit uh, key. And if you see, I ran the command and it succeeded. So my object is uploaded into the console. So let's get back to the console. Let's hit a refresh. And you can see the object is here. Uh, but if you check uh, the object for encryption, it says none. And it says nothing. It's not even saying none. Uh, there's no... Uh, description of encryption or what kind of encryption it's using if I go into the object itself uh, you can still see the server-side encryption is blank uh, let me make this object public now I'll show you how you'll get to know that this has been encrypted now let's try and open it and you see when you try to access this it gives you the error. The object was stored using a form of server-side encryption. The correct parameter must be provided. So in order to access this object, you need to provide the key uh, to uh, make a GET request to this object. So this ensures that uh, this object is encrypted using your uh, customer-provided keys. Cool.
So now let's move on to our final form of encryption, which is uh, encryption in transit. So encryption in transit is basically managed by uh, SSL. So if I go to the object which we just we've uploaded to our bucket, this let's try and open this. So you can see this object is accessible. So what if I change this to HTTP? You can see this object is still accessible using the HTTP as well. So what if I want to force that uh, no object is accessible over HTTP and all the object should be accessible over secure protocol or HTTPS. So for that, let's go to our bucket. Let's go to permissions, go to bucket policy. So I have a bucket policy uh, or rather I'll show you how you can generate it. So let's go to policy generator, select S3 bucket, select the action as deny, all principles, action. So the action which we are going to implement is get object, select get object. Uh, for ARN, I need to copy my bucket ARN. So let's copy the bucket ARN. Do the paste it here, and let's add some conditions. Condition will be pool, AWS secure transport, and this should be false. Add condition, add statement. And generate the policy. So let's copy the policy. Paste it here. And for resource, I would say all the resources. So what I'm doing is I'm denying uh, an access to get object on all the objects in this bucket if the secure transport uh, is false. So let's save this. Now let's go to bucket or rather let's go to our object and see if you are using it to access uh, via HTTP. So let's refresh it and you can see access denied. So now and let's try with HTTPS. And you can see the object is accessible. So now we have implemented uh, encryption in transit as well. So I think this is it for this video guys. Uh, in the next video we will continue with some more exciting stuff. So please uh, do check out. Thank you for watching. Thank you.